They say that when Jandek goes surfing, he catches no wave. Instead, he falls on the rocks as they crumble. That's what just washed ashore today, the first album of Jandek's second era, The Rocks Crumble. Many fans like to call it his first truly electric album, since previously the electric guitar was only used for brief periods. However, I prefer not to call this the electric era, since it does include some all-acoustic records. What defines this period is simply a clear beginning. If you've been watching my videos, you most likely understand the title of the album. Things just roll like rocks into your life, eventually vanishing until you understand the law of conservation of mass. Every person and event lives on, whether it's a different shape or just existing in the mind. It'll do us good to remember this when the aging representative bites the dust. But back in 1983, the title also symbolized the dawn of a new era, reminding us that the new peculiarities still come from the same mind we know and love. As mentioned in a previous video, The Rock's Crumble is where we start to hear some punk and no wave influence. Although the guitar is still atonal, there are actual riffs to be heard, especially in the second half. Now, when I mention punk rock and guitar riffs, I'm not talking about some Johnny Ramone knockoff. Instead, Jandek goes off on a lot of small, improvised tangents. In the John Trubay interview, it's revealed that Jandek himself took John's place on drums, much to the album's benefit. Naturally, his playing is still sloppy, but at least it's easy to hear what he's trying to do. If you listen to the drumming on Chair Beside a Window, you'll notice similarities with what you hear on this record, as opposed to that chaos on Your Turn to Fall. Anyway, make sure you take your Adderall, because Jandek has returned to his complex lyrical style. Gone are the long periods of strumming between only a few sentences. Perhaps going electric lit a spark of creativity in his mind. I've experienced that myself. I won't be picking out the essential songs this time, but as with the first two records, certain tracks will get a lot more time in the spotlight. If you buy The Rock's Crumble expecting the first Electric Jandek album, you might be taken aback during the first two songs, because it's exactly where Your Turn to Fall left off. It's the same guitar tuning as the second half of that album, and the vocals have the same calmness we've come to expect from this artist. If these tracks were outtakes from the last record, I'm glad they found a home, because God knows there won't be a Jandek equivalent to Nirvana's Incesticide. Faceless gets the ball rolling with a similar foot-tapping rhythm to Centaur Train, and the strumming gets fairly aggressive in the second half. It simply talks about some stranger who frequently passes by the narrator, yet refuses to make eye contact. The mood is similar to Liquid's Flow to the Sea, except the people knew each other on that one. It may not be innovative, but the unpretentious nature of Faceless makes it a fine introduction to the album. Of course, there's another version of Nancy Sings just ahead, except it's in the style of a typical Jandek song, nothing but guitar and the voice of the representative. Also, the name Birthday doesn't have much to do with the song, so maybe it was simply recorded on a birthday. Regardless, it's nice to have this many variations of a song, and plenty of artists could learn from this example. Speaking of variations, the European Jewel Saga is back with a vengeance. Lyrically, there's nothing new going on here, so Jandek had to get, uh, creative with the titles. They boggle the mind in several ways. First, what's with the random numbering? It can't possibly refer to which take we're hearing, or else Jandek would be the most extreme perfectionist I've ever heard. Perhaps European Jewel 613 was recorded at 613? If so, then where's the colon in the title? Next, European Jewel 2 is the second of the three, which just makes too much sense in this scenario. Also, why is it marked with a Roman numeral? Seriously, only Jandek can use numbers to make me this uncomfortable. Aside from that, European Jewel 613 is actually my favorite version because it includes all the lyrics and retains the overall feel of the original, while the new tuning keeps it from sounding stale. If you prefer the Chair Beside a Window version, the more upbeat 501 features drumming, although the guitar riffs don't sound quite as harsh. As for number two, it's pretty useless, since it includes fewer lyrics than the original did, but at least the drumming has a different tempo than 501. Better known for the rendition on a later album, Message to the Clerk is a true classic that debuted here. The song is split in two, but musically both parts are similar, and they definitely tell the same story, so 
I'll discuss them collectively. Take the message to the clerk. Tell him not to work. With its familiar rhyme scheme and catchy refrain, the lyrics are pretty traditional for a Jandex song. After studying them a bit, I've concluded that the titular clerk is actually the narrator, who is unemployed and getting into various shenanigans. He's a freeloading poet who might be an addict indicated by the line, I'm living high, I'm living low. He also threatens a priest for questioning his faith. Towards the end, he looks in the mirror and finds out what kind of monster he's become. Meanwhile, I have no comment for lines like, Now you're independent, brush your teeth three times a day. I'm honestly better acquainted with the newer version of the song, but it tells a good enough story to be welcome on any album. Now that I think about it, the last four songs are the only ones unique to this album. You could count Faceless, but it really sounds like it was supposed to be on Your Turn to Fall. Anyway, three of the closing tracks are excellent, and the final one is good enough for what it is. Once you're through with Message to the Clerk, you're treated to the palm-muted intro to Branded on a Telephone. Now how about that title? After some unsuccessful Google searches, I'm just going to assume it's some old-fashioned slang. The song itself doesn't explain it, and the other lyrics don't make much more sense. There's not much of a story, except the narrator seems to die somehow, kissing the feet of his creator as he digs his grave. It may only be a surreal collection of rhymes, but it has a pretty sweet groove. Up next is Breathtaker, which is definitely a nod to punk rock. As sloppy as the delivery may be, it has a pretty distinct chord progression, which is probably why I covered it years back. It seems to describe a rock and roll musician with a fast-paced lifestyle and something called hot tail fever. Go around the corner, hot tail fever, it's the cold. Jandek concludes this rocker with the enigmatic line, a tale a sparrow told once to the mighty bold. So, I'm glad the sparrow didn't just sing its usual song. So far, there's been a lot to enjoy, but every time I turn on The Rocks Crumble, I especially look forward to Lonesome Company. It's noticeably less raucous than the other electric tracks, and Jandek sounds like he smoked some reefer before recording the drum track. The way I see it, the lyrics are the words of someone who left town due to abandonment, and so he constantly looks for someone to fill the void in his heart. Anita, someone near, just to talk to her, look at. And as the words ring, can be pretty difficult to read Jandek's emotions, but I can always feel the pain in this story when I listen to it. The fact that he conveys it without traditional guitar riffs makes it all the more memorable, and it would be the perfect ending to any Jandek album. However, Same Road was chosen for that role, and it does a decent job. It can get a little repetitive, but that makes sense with a line like, walking down the same road every day. The narrator lives a monotonous life and struggles to keep his cool. His solution is to just mix up the daily occurrences. Then, Jandek plays out the album by walking on the same road over and over. If you want to add some extra meaning to the song, think of it as the mundane counterpart to Lonesome Company. I can imagine a drifter staying on the same highway as he moves along. And now, all that remains of the record is sand. I'm probably a little biased in favor of it, because I heard it a lot as I shuffled my Jandek playlist in high school. For some reason, it showed up more than White Box Requiem, the first one I owned. As the first album in this new era, I think a lot of fans would rank it in the middle, which is totally acceptable when things are transitioning. It definitely acts as a bridge between the record before and after it, but with just a morsel of acoustic material and all the duplicated tracks, you can't deny that it was unique for its time. Throw in the ultimate European jewel and some terrific new electric tracks, and the rocks crumble passes with flying colors. If you don't believe in omens, this album may change that, because a new Jandek is showing its face. <laughs>